Hallo Gratiens, um, ek gaan vandag probeer om so twee of drie video's te maak, maar ek wil eerst focus op jou huiswerk wat gemerk moet word. So I'm gonna start with the homework that you guys got from exercise 14 um, on page 214. So Miss Wessels gave you guys the rest of the exercise to do. Um, I'm gonna mark question 3 and question 4. If you guys had any um, trouble with balancing the equations from 2.10 to 2.14. Um, Stier from of my boodskap, dan kan ons kyk, laat ons het uitsorteer. Okay, so for number three, they gave you two different equations. They gave you the one in the molecular formula forum. So I let you know, say, the molecular formula is so, van the eerste ene, like so. In the tweede ene, het hulle vir jou die woordformule gegeet. Goed, en dan gaan ons gaan een paar vragen hulle beantwoord. So hulle vraag vir jou, wat er een van die twee is a composition reaction? Um, Ach, die composition reaction met ander woorde ontbindingsreaksie. Nou, want die ontbindingsreaksie is wanneer een molekule opbreek in meer verschillende molecules. So if you look at equation 2, you'll see we go from having one um, molecule to having two different types of molecules. So it is definitely two here. Uh, Wat ontbind. And then 3.1.2, they ask for a synthesis reaction. So daar kyk ons, waar gaan ons van meer verskillende soorte molecules. Here we have two different types of molecules to only one type of molecule. So the correct answer will be number one there. Dan vraag hulle vir jou by 3.2, waarvoor staan die G? It stands for gas, it indicates the phase. So remember, uh, AQ indicates it's um, in aqua solution, in here is for gas, in L is for vloeistof, for liquid, and S is for solid phase, fast is for them. Okay, then they ask, write the chemical formula for the following. So for this, you'll have to go back to your polyatomic ions. So a frafia van aluminium oxide. So let's start with the charges that we know. So aluminium, ek jok, ek lees al die tweede ene, hulle vraag eerst vir jou vir aluminium karbonaat. So you need to know that those are the symbols for aluminium and for carbonate respectively. Ok, so aluminiumse lading, gaan lees ons van die periodieke tabel af. Oh, Delete. Um, aluminiumse lading gaan lees ons van die periodieke tabel af as positief 3. Um, if you look at the periodic table, that's the one that follows the transition metals. In karbonaat sin moet jy gaan leer, moet wees minus 2. In other words, the smallest common factor that we can work towards is 6. So we need to get this one to positive 6 and this one to negative 6, because then they'll balance out one another. Meaning that we need two aluminiums, and three of these groups. En onthou, wanneer dit een polyatomiese ioon is, dan moet jy seker maak, jy sit een hakkie met om aan die buitenkant. Like that. Ok, then the rest are a bit easier. Hulle vraag vir jou vir aluminium oxide. So onthou, as het oxide is, the IDE, of in Afrikaans die IED, beteken dit is net O. Of as het nou chloride, chloride was, it, then it would only have been Cl, of sulfite, of nitrite. So all of those um, monoatomic um, anions, they end in IDE and Afrikaans in EED. Okay, so we have aluminium 3 plus, oxygen 2 minus. So once again, we go towards 6. So we've got two of these. Three of these. En die rede hoe kom ek niks nou in haki sit nie, is omdat al twee van hulle is net monoatomies. We're only talking about aluminium and only talking about oxygen. Ok. Goed, dan vraag hulle vir jou, skryf die gebalanceerde vergelijking neer van die eerste ene. So it's 
Cl2. Ach, nee, man. So we've got Cl2. I'm going to leave out the phase now. Plus H2 gives you HCl. Okay, and I say that it's very easy to balance it. If you have two before and sit, then you'll see you have two hydrogens and two chlorides before and the same after. So it's like a very to balance it. Then they say use the balanced equation in question 3.2 to show that the mass is conserved in a chemical reaction. So do you can you manage the weight of mass of of about of mass describe showing that before we have two Cl's and two hydrogens, and after we still have two Cl's and two hydrogens. They just bonded differently. Okay. Good. Then by frog four, for all of you, we name the following stuff. So for 4.1.1, they say N2O4. Now. Technisch gesproken is hier in zijn naam um, stikstof tetraoxid. Um, the tetra means full, but I would have been happy if you just got to nitrogen oxide. Het belangrijke deel wat jullie moet weten is, het is een IED in English IDE. Um, then the next one is a bit more difficult and we often forget about this. Remember, iron is one of the transition metals. And if you have a transition metal, you must put the charge in brackets in the name. Oké, okay, so daarvoor gaan ons eerst gaan kijken naar hierdie ene. En ons gaan sê, ons het 3 kloer 1 minus die ene. So in other words, to balance that out, this one had to have a positive 3 charge. So if we write that down, it means that it'll be iron in brackets 3. En kijk weer vir my na die idee hier aan die einde. So in Afrikaans is het eister. 3 chloride. Okay, almost done. So then for 4.2.1, you had to write down the formula for the following compounds hydrogen peroxide, you guys have to know. Part we worked with. And then for calcium phosphate, we have to balance a polyatomic iron again. So we know that calcium is Ca2. And then we know that phosphate is P with 4, 3 minus. So once again, we're going towards 6, meaning that I have Ca3, PO4, and I need two of those. Good, because you got three of these and two of them to get all two by 6 out of the way to balance it. But because this one is polyatomic, it means that you have to put a bracket and the two on the outside.